So these two amendments actually reflect what is contained within the local electricity bill started in the other place. And that has the backing of 314 MPs from all of the major parties. And that is aiming to help the community groups sell the electricity they generate to local customers. So this is a chance with these two amendments to take forward that bill. This is the obvious opportunity to act now. Community energy, we've seen them operating again and again, investing back in their local community, particularly in energy security schemes. In 2021, community energy groups spent more than half a million pounds on energy efficiency upgrades, helping more than 20,000 people reduce their energy bills and stay warm. Also, what we see is job creation. In 2021, community energy schemes across the UK had more than 3,000 volunteers and more than 600 full-time staff, but only about 30% of, of the groups actually employed any paid staff. If we actually saw a tenfold increase in these schemes and a professionalisation of the sector, it's been estimated by the Poverty and Environment Trust that you could see 33,000 jobs be created. That would be jobs to be spread, of course, around the country. My Lords, I'm very pleased to support this amendment, these two amendments, um, along with Lord Teverson and Baroness Young. If the government was willing to not just see the benefit of community energy, as I'm sure that the Minister does, but to put in place the policy measures to support it, it will make things so much easier for all of us. I also uh, uh, support amendments 237 and 238, to which I've added my name. Suffice it to say that um, the whole issue of, of how uh, energy generators on a local basis can sell their power that they generate locally through a community scheme to local communities is the kind of magic bit in, in all this about, about community generation. Um, local schemes are developed and owned by local people. They've got local benefits in the form of cheaper and cleaner energy. And they also provide other benefits for local communities. Well, I'm very pleased to put my own name uh, to both uh, the Noble Baroness, Baroness Bennett's uh, uh, amendments. But I think the real importance about <coughs> Um, community energy to me is yes sure it's generating power but what it actually allows is communities to come together and actually be a part of the march forward nationally to net zero and globally to net zero so let's have this in in the bill let's ignite the sector again and let communities participate in what is one of our most important objectives that we have on the planet. My Lords, I rise to add my strong support for Amendments 237 and 238, so ably introduced by Baroness Bennett of Manor Castle and her strong team of cross-party supporters. I want to thank Steve, uh, sorry, Steve Shaw of Power for People for his briefing. Um, as we face the existential threat from climate change, it cannot be right for small-scale community renewable energy schemes to be rendered unworkable by disproportionate regulatory burdens and costs. Other countries are far more effectively promoting small-scale energy production, apparently, often by community groups. It has to be possible for the UK to do the same. So I hope that today the Minister will agree in principle that this bill must re remove the barriers to community <coughs> en energy production. The ownership and, be and commercial benefits of these areas are extremely complicated. It's not, no, no one is in a, in a position to get a cost effective, reasonable scale scheme going on their own. It needs something that will work as a whole. At the moment, in the system we have at the moment, uh, it is not happening. And it is ridiculous that it isn't happening. Something needs to move to enable us to move from 200 hectares of white roof to 200 hectares of black roof and get the benefits of that. Firstly, let me uh, set out that the government does believe that community groups do have a role to play in our efforts to eliminate our contribution to climate change. However, it is our view that encouraging or introducing obligations on licensed electricity suppliers to mandate the, uh, to, into offering local tariffs would be a disproportionate intervention in the market. Uh, local tariffs are better left 
as commercial decisions for suppliers. And we should allow the small-scale export markets to develop with minimum intervention and not introduce a support scheme that specifies minimum prices or contract length for generators. I say without much optimism that local lords are reassured that the government does recognise the role of community and locally uh, owned uh, renewable energy schemes.